Brooks Running has a new shoe for you runners out there. Did you hear that? Better turn up your volume. In fact, turn it up to the max. Introducing the all-new Ghost Max. It's got all kinds of things to make your knees and ankles feel protected, like Max Cushion, Max Soft Landings with DNA Loft V2 Foam, and Max Smooth Rides with their Glide Roll Rocker. Feel better on your run with Ghost Max. Learn more at brooksrunning.com. This episode is brought to you by Clavio, the platform that powers smarter digital relationships. With Clavio, you can activate all your customer data in real time, connect seamlessly with your customers across all channels, guide your marketing strategy with AI-powered insights, recommendations, and automated assistance, deliver experiences that feel individually designed at scale, and grow your business faster. Power smarter digital relationships with Clavio. Learn more at Clavio.com slash Spotify. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash Spotify. You're listening to the Food Heals Podcast. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben & Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately. All right, welcome Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining me. I'm Allison Melody. First, today I'll be answering your questions about lab grown meat. Then I'm talking to Dr. Deepika Krishna about healing gynecological cancer. And finally, I'll be covering one of the most controversial topics of our time and making a very special announcement. Let's dive right in. Roll it, Roxy. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. All right, I want to start out with a topic that seems to be on the forefront of everyone's minds because everyone is asking me about this. People are talking about this and I'm hearing conflicting information and really a lot of misinformation around it. So that's why I know it's a really, really important topic to cover. And we've covered this on Food Heals before, but it's been a while and there's been some new developments. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about lab grown meat. That's not plant-based meat. I'm not talking about a Beyond Burger or an Impossible Burger made of plants. I'm talking about meat that is grown from cells of animals in a lab. Is it controversial? Should you try it? Is this good or bad for the world? Those are the questions that I want to explore today. I want to start out by saying that I understand why people are concerned, and we should ask questions. Anytime something new comes to market, we should ask, why is it here? Where is it coming from? Who is funding it? I think those are really, really important questions to be asking ourselves before we put anything into our body, whether it's a food product, a supplement, or what have you, right? I've had so many people lately sending me TikToks and Instagram videos and articles about the controversy around lab-grown meat. So I'm going to give you my opinion, and I want to say that this can change in the future based on new information coming out. But here's where I am right now. I think lab-grown meat is incredible because This has the potential to end factory farming as we know it. Not only that, but we know that animal products are a leading cause of chronic disease in our bodies. So it also has the potential to eliminate the chronic disease and obesity epidemic as we know it. This is something we've never seen before in our lifetime, certainly not in my lifetime. And that's why I think this is absolutely incredible and I support it. Now I have interviewed multiple people on this show, but it's been a while, as I said, um, people from the Humane Society, Mercy for Animals, the Good Food Institute, who have talked about the incredible potential. But back then, it wasn't available at our fingertips. But recently, the USDA has approved it. The FDA is now allowing lab-grown meat to be available and affordable for the masses. This is huge news, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes. At the same time, a lot of people are coming out of the woodworks because what's happening is the profits of lab-grown meats are absolutely going to threaten the profits of other organizations who need not be named, but I think you know what I mean, right? So no matter what, there's going to be detractors and there's going to be a lot of misinformation coming out around what lab-grown meat is. So let's talk about it. You may hear it referred to as different things, cultured, 
cultivated, cell-based, or clean meat. Silicon Valley startups are literally on the forefront of this. They're all trying to be the first one to market, right? And that's great. Let's create some competition so that these things become affordable. Because when this was first approved years and years ago, it was completely unaffordable for the average person, right? Well, now it's going to be something that is served in restaurants. Now it's going to be something that you can buy at the grocery store. So this is incredible because it's actual meat without antibiotics, without pesticides and herbicides without being fed a crap diet that then goes into our bodies. This means that animals do not have to die and not only die, but suffer, mercilessly suffer and die for our food. 70 billion land animals and billions of marine animals are killed for us to eat every single year. Most of them are raised in cruel, inhumane factory farms where they are brutally abused and tortured. I'm sure you've seen the videos. If you haven't, they're not for the faint of heart, but they will change your life. They will change your mind. If you have any empathy or compassion in your body, when you see that, you will become anti-factory farming. I guarantee it. And not only are these factory farms totally cruel, totally inhumane, totally torturous, but they also are disastrous for the surrounding neighborhoods, for our environment, for the communities, for our health. And of course, like I said, for animal welfare. Runoff from these farms is causing all kinds of chronic disease in the surrounding communities where they are. It doesn't have to be this way. This is a broken food system that does not work. So lab-grown meat is an incredible alternative to factory farming. And I don't know how long it's going to take Food Heals Nation. There's different predictions out there. I don't know who's right, but I know that this can end factory farming. And I believe in our lifetime. Why do I believe that? Because I've asked people on this show who know way more than me about this, right? And they believe that this can end factory farming in our lifetime. And that's why I'm for it. So why is this so controversial? Well, I've seen some arguments online of people saying like, oh my God, these companies are just in it to make money. Uh, Record scratch, of course they are. Every company creates a company to make money. It's not a nonprofit, right? They have to make money so that they can pay their shareholders or that so they can pay themselves to work every day and go to work. Um, So I don't have a problem with that. And I think that is just a way to detract from the fact that they're going to threaten big other company profits, okay? The other thing is, is that they say it harms an animal to get the cells. So let's talk about that because I think that's the most important point here, how lab-grown meat is actually produced. So what they do is scientists take a small number of muscle cells from a living animal and they're using anesthesia to provide relief from pain of the animal. The animal will experience a momentary twinge of discomfort, kind of like getting a routine blood test like we would at our doctor's office, like a prick. So let's compare that to the massive amount of suffering that an animal goes through at a factory farm. And I would love someone to debate me why factory farming is less cruel and horrible to an animal than taking a few cells. So then what they do is they take the harvested cells and they put them in bioreactors and then they add them to a bath of nutrients. The cells then grow and multiply. They produce real muscle tissue, which then the scientists can use to shape into edible scaffoldings. Using these scaffoldings, they can transform lab-grown cells into things like steak and chicken nuggets and hamburger patties or even salmon sashimi. And the final product is you get a real cut of meat. It's ready to be cooked, marinated, breaded, grilled, baked, fried, whatever you guys want. But no animal slaughter is required and it's the cleanest meat that you can get. Now, what about the fact that meat consumption can lead to chronic disease because of its high cholesterol and saturated fat content? Yeah, I agree with you, okay? But I also think that people aren't giving up their meat and therefore, this is for the people who are never going to give up their meat. Eat the lab-grown meat, you'll be healthier and you don't have to kill an animal to do so, right? Plus, in a lab the scientists can actually control the quantities of cholesterol and saturated fat in each cut. So you can get a healthier piece of meat, right? And it's not contaminated by all the crap from the factory farms as well. Not to mention the fact 
that factory farms are using growth hormones to unnaturally grow the factory farm animals huge so that they can have more profit from each animal. These growth hormones are so harmful. They have developmental, neurological, genotoxic, and carcinogenic effects. Lab-grown meat doesn't. You know my parents died of cancer. You know I want to be as anti-cancer and as clean as possible. I'm not going to eat meat. This is not for me. This is for the people who want their meat, and I believe that this can help with the cancer epidemic as well. As long as we stay on top of these companies and make sure they're not cutting corners. Because it's true, when these trends come, when these companies grow, when there's a bunch of competition, they may start cutting corners. I don't know what that looks like yet because that time period isn't here yet. So we have to watch, we have to pay attention, we have to stay informed, we have to educate ourselves. But I believe that factory farmed meat is in the past and I believe that lab grown meat is a sustainable, amazing, encouraging future. Now I'm going to roll my interview with Dr. Bruce Friedrich from the Good Food Institute. This is back from episode 230, but I'm going to roll just a few minutes so you can hear exactly what we talked about. And you're welcome to go back and listen to the full thing, but I want you to hear it from his mouth, what he thinks. And I hope that helps you make an informed and compassionate decision around what you think about this. And I'd love to hear from you. If you want to share with me your thoughts, your feelings on this, if you think I'm right, if you think I'm wrong, I'm open to discussion. This is where I stand as of today. For our listeners, for Food Heals Nation, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Uh, Well, my name is Bruce Friedrich. I am co-founder and executive director of a nonprofit organization called the Good Food Institute. GFI uses markets and food technology to shift society away from industrial animal agriculture and toward plant-based and clean meat alternatives. People can check out everything that GFI is doing and sign up for our email list on our website, which is just gfi.org, GFI for Good Food Institute. .org. And I'm a huge fan of Good Food Institute and all of the initiatives that you guys are doing. Can you tell us a little bit more about clean meat? I know that we have talked about this before. We've had a number of people on from organizations like the Humane Society and Mercy for Animals. And I would really love to get it straight from you what the clean meat initiative really is and how it has the ability to really change things. Sure. So the Clean Meat Initiative is a complement to the plant-based meat initiative. And I'll actually start with plant-based just because people think they know what plant-based meat is. They've eaten a veggie burger or they've eaten veggie nuggets or something like that. Uh, But plant-based meat is the brainchild of a guy named Ethan Brown. He founded a company called Beyond Meat. And back in 2009, he was working in clean energy. And he read the UN report, Livestock's Long Shadow, which argues that 18% of all climate change is attributable to industrial animal agriculture, which is about 40% more than all forms of transportation combined. And Ethan's brainstorm is that meat is just made of lipids, amino acids, minerals, and water. Everything that exists in meat, we can also make from plants. So up until Ethan came around, uh, people generally thought of uh, veggie burgers, veggie nuggets, that sort of thing. They thought of the target audience for that as being vegetarians and maybe flexitarians. And Ethan thought, no, meat is so vastly inefficient. If we use plants directly, rather than cycling plants through animals, we can biomimic meat for a fraction of the price. And since it's a fraction of the price, it'll cost less and we can actually just replace the meat industry with plant-based meat. We just give people exactly what they want. We give them the the taste, the texture, it's basically Bio, not bioidentical, but biomimicked and less expensive, and people will flock to it. Clean meat is the complement to plant-based meat. Clean meat is for the people who just absolutely want to eat meat. And clean meat is real meat, but it's produced directly from cells. So right now what we do is we grow vast quantities of crops. We feed those crops to chickens and pigs and cattle and other farm animals. A tiny fraction of what we feed to the animals goes into the animals actually producing meat. Most of it goes into the animals simply leading their lives. About half of it goes into feathers or scales or bones or blood or other things that human beings don't eat. And then only about a tenth of the caloric intake for a chicken um, and even less for pigs and cows and turkeys is actually turned into meat. So clean meat, you feed the cells directly instead of 
all of the inefficiencies of feeding live animals, the cells multiply and grow, and then you harvest the meat and essentially meat breweries is what it looks like. And I have a question for you, Bruce. Are there any, have there been any studies in terms of the implications of like the brewed meat versus grown meat in terms of health and health effects? Um, Well, what we know to be true is that about 70% of all of the antibiotics that are produced by pharmaceuticals in the United States, about 70% of them are fed to farm animals. And that's not because farm animals are all sick. It's because farm animals are kept in conditions that are incredibly bad. That makes them sick. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So they're given antibiotics prophylactically. They're given antibiotics so that they won't get sick in the conditions that would otherwise sicken them. And farmers also discovered that these antibiotics are growth promoting. So they're given antibiotics for growth promotion and also prophylactically. And yes, the antibiotics can collect in the animal's flesh and we can consume low level doses of antibiotics this way. But the real global threat is that we're using these antibiotics in farm animals, which causes the bacteria basically to mutate and become superbugs. Right now, about 10,000 people in North America and Europe die every single year from these mutated superbugs. The UK government has predicted that on the present trajectory, that number could be 10 million people a year by 2050. It could cost the global economy $100 trillion by 2050. And according to this report, the threat to the human race from antibiotic resistance is greater than the threat from climate change. So that is one of the ways that clean meat is significantly better for human health. Another reason is that another uh, way that clean meat is better for human health is that it doesn't have the bacterial contamination. Clean meat bypasses animal intestines. So it bypasses the salmonella, the campylobacter, the E. coli, all of the other contaminants that collect on the meat. And in the United States, contaminated meat sickens tens of millions of Americans every single year, sends more than 100,000 to the hospital, kills more than 1,000 every single year. All of that goes away with clean meat. It's so amazing. And I'm so excited that you guys are on the forefront of this. And just going back to the Beyond Meat, that is something that revolutionized it for me as a vegan where I hated veggie burgers. So I wanted to support you know, eating a veggie burger, but I never could find one that I actually liked. And Beyond Meat changed that. And I love the taste of the Beyond Meat. So how is the taste of the clean meat? I've asked a couple of people this and they've all had positive feedback, but what's your opinion? Or, or you're vegan. Have you tried it? Yes, I have tried it. And it was what I remember meat tasting like. Um, but I, I think the fact that I have tried it and found it to be meat-like is significantly less important than the fact that meat eaters like uh, Mark Post, the founder of Mosa Meat, most of the staff at Memphis Meats, at Finless Foods, uh, the people who are working on it are mostly meat eaters and they're eating it. And they say, you know, look, it's a, a bioidentical product. It tastes like meat because it is meat. Sort of like saying, you know, what does uh, what does pasta taste like? Pasta tastes like pasta. This is meat. It tastes exactly like meat because that's what it is. But it is engineered differently. Yes, it is. It is meat using a different process. So instead of feeding animals, which causes the animal's muscles, animal cells to multiply and grow, Here we're feeding the cells directly, which causes them to multiply and grow. But um, either way, you're eating animal meat. It's just grown in two different ways. I don't want to discount um, or gloss over what you were saying about the antibiotics. This is so important because what's going to happen if we continue on this trajectory that we're on, correct me if I'm wrong, Bruce, but what's going to happen is we will have so much antibiotic resistance that a kid will get a cut and will die, right? I'm not trying to be extremist or alarmist, but tell me about you know, the the concept of the end of antibiotics, the way that it's going right now. Yeah. I mean, if if somebody wants a scare, they they can go to their (laughs) Google browser and punch in the end of working antibiotics. And you will find stories from the New York Times and New Scientist and Scientific American and CNN, like everybody has at this point opined on the end of working antibiotics. And it is exactly what you just described. Suddenly a cut or an infection that would normally be treated with a round of antibiotics now the antibiotics don't work and you have to lose a limb or, and if you don't get to it quickly enough, yes, it can actually kill you. Coughs can become fatal. The flu absolutely becomes fatal. And you really want to scare, um, add the word China to your Google search for the end of working antibiotics because the U.S. is notoriously permissive about antibiotic use in the developed world. China is, uh, you know, a developing economy and, and they're using antibiotics that are banned in the United States. But but obviously superbugs don't know 
international boundaries. So um, this is really a, a terrifying thing. And, and clean meat and plant-based meat uh, are the solution to this problem. They're also the solution to how we feed 9.7 billion pe people by 2050, the solution to what do we do about climate change. They solve a lot of problems that governments and big foundations and scientific funders care about. So we're, we're, we've got a bit of money into these technologies now. We're working toward a lot more money into basic science and these technologies. So let's talk about the environmental impact that you just alluded to. So essentially, it's the unsustainability of the factory farming and animal agriculture that currently exists. That is the reason. Is that accurate? Yeah. I mean, people can think about it intuitively. So everybody listening is eating somewhere on the order of, you know, if you're small, 1,200 calories a day. If you're large and athletic, you know, maybe north of 3,000 calories a day. And none of us are intentionally gaining weight. Most of us are not gaining weight at all because our bodies require that number of calories simply to exist. That same sort of thing is true for farm animals. So it takes nine calories in the form of soy or wheat or oats or whatever it is that you're feeding to a chicken to get one calorie back out. It's literally 800% food waste. So we have so many people incensed about food waste, and we should be. Uh, about 40% of everything that's produced is thrown away. But the physiology of the chicken dictates that you are essentially throwing away eight calories of crops for every one calorie of meat that you're consuming. And every other animal is worse than that. Chicken is the most efficient animal. And it's not just, you know, that means nine times as much land, nine times as much water, nine times as much pesticide and herbicide, nine times as much gasoline to power the combine. Um, and then you're shipping those, you're shipping the, the crops to the feed mill and you're operating the feed mill. You're shipping the feed to the factory farm and you're operating the farm. You're shipping the animals to the slaughterhouse and you're operating the slaughterhouse. So you've got the sort of rank inefficiency of it and you've got all the extra stages of production. So that UN report that I was talking about that Ethan Brown read, Livestock's Long Shadow, it says that no matter what environmental issue you're looking at from the smallest and most local to the largest and most global, animal agriculture is one of the top three contributors. So everything from water use and water pollution to soil desertification to species loss to, as we've been talking about, climate change. Wow. And also, how can clean meat and plant-based meat, I believe, how can they contribute to also ending poverty and hunger? Yeah, I mean, that goes back to the nine calories in for one calorie out. And this is one that Eric Schmidt, so the former CEO of Google, Eric Schmidt, was speaking at the Milk and Global Conference a couple of years ago. And he was asked to reflect on six technological innovations that he thinks will improve life for humanity by a factor of at least tenfold in the fairly near future. So technological innovation, improve life, factor of tenfold, near future. And the first thing he talked about was plant-based meat. And he talked about plant-based meat, not you know because the three of us have a tastier veggie burger to eat. Uh, he talked about it because it will feed the world without the adverse climate impact. So it takes you know one tenth the resources for a chicken and even less resources for pigs and cows. We live in a global marketplace where that competition for land and that competition for cereal crops, it basically is competition between farm animals for developed economies and the global poor. So we have somewhere on the order of 800 million people right now who are living in what the UN calls nutritional deficit. They're not taking in enough calories to sustain basic life function. And indeed, tens of millions of people die from starvation-related causes every year. A lot of that is because we're eating so much meat. It's putting such a tax on the land um, and using so many crops that it's driving up the price. Um, and it's literally leading to global starvation. You know, I'm thinking about my hometown. Well, I'm from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and North Carolina was just kind of decimated by this hurricane, and it's where all the hog farms are. And this is a place where the people that are going to be most disproportionately affected by a hurricane or anything like that from the runoff of all of these hog farms are in the poorest communities. And I'm just wondering, how are these communities going to be reached with not only um, access, but also education? How are we reaching out to people who, A, don't understand this concept and B, don't yet? I know we don't all have access to clean meat yet, but don't even have access to plant-based meat or understand it as a concept. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the brilliant thing about plant-based meat and clean meat is that they don't require that anybody change the factors that actually dictate how they make food choices. Mm -hmm. So and the, the central brainstorm of GFI is that we can give people everything that they like about meat at a lower price. And it has never been the case in all of human history that you produced a product 
that gave consumers exactly what they want for a lower price and it wasn't completely subsumed. Wow. So if we can biomimic meat and as the scale of the product scales up, whether that's plant-based meat or clean meat or a combination of both, as it scales up, the price will come down. As the price comes down, you know, McDonald's and Burger King and Subway and all of the great Walmart and Target, like everybody just shifts to plant-based meat and clean meat production instead of industrial animal agriculture. And that reaches, you know, not just the poor of Eritrea and the Sudan and India, it also reaches the poor of North Carolina and Mississippi and everywhere else. And when do you foresee this happening? Do you have any predictions for us? So Pat Brown, no relation to Ethan Brown, the founder of Impossible Foods, he thinks 2035. He thinks the scale up is going to is going to get us to 100%. He thinks it's going to be 100% plant-based meat by 2035. At GFI, our goal is, um, and obviously we're not working by ourselves, and one of the big things that we're working on is trying to get billion-dollar injections into R&D for plant-based meat and clean meat, uh, but our goal is 2050. And we are on a trajectory that will get us, if X is plant-based meat and Y is clean meat, we want X plus Y to equal 100%. And in order to get there right now, plant-based meat is a third of 1% of the meat market. That's why the people in North Carolina haven't heard of it yet, or they probably can't afford it because it's still at at higher price points uh, because the production is just so tiny. But from 2017 to 2018, it went up at 23%. There was 23% growth in plant-based meat, and it would have been quite a bit higher. That growth was constrained by the fact that companies like Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat simply can't produce as much much, uh, to meet the demand that exists. But If we can stay on a 20% year-on-year trajectory, uh, which is what we did from 2017 to 2018, we actually beat that. If we can stay on that trajectory, we're at 100% by 2050. Wow. Okay. So this is going to happen in our lifetime. It is. Yeah. I I mean, you know, Pat Brown thinks we're being uh, pessimistic by saying 2050. Uh, (laughs) If you Google Pat Brown Impossible Foods 2035, you can hear him speaking very convincingly about, for example, you know, one one of the examples is... uh, the Model T was introduced in 1908, and within five years, there were more cars than horses on the streets of New York City. I'm not sure how quickly digital film overtook non-digital film. Digital photography overtook uh, film. I'm not sure how quickly cell phones have overtaken landlines. But once it, you know, once the the snowball is rolling down the hill, it can happen pretty fast. And if we're successful in convincing, you know, one of our initiatives is to convince China to take plant-based and clean meat as seriously as it's presently taking clean energy. Um, If China decides to sink $3 billion into this initiative, then we beat Pat Brown's predictions. I just got a huge, amazing shipment from Organifi. I'm so excited to share with you. If you need extra nutrition, if you need extra detox this month, make sure you go to OrganifiShop.com slash Food Heals. And of course, you'll get 20% off your order using the discount code Food Heals. So what's in the box? We have Organifi Green Juice. That is a body reset. It's great for stress support. It's kind of how you wake up in the morning to get some energy. You start your day with some essential superfoods. Then let's see what else we have. The red juice. Yes, this one. This one's really good. It tastes good for kids too. It's got their cordyceps, their rhodiola, Siberian ginseng, reishi mushroom, red beet, pomegranate, all the fruits. This is a superfood. I take that in the afternoon. Then I've got the gold, y'all. I've got the gold. That's your turmeric tea latte for rest and rela- relaxation with turmeric, ginger, lemon balm, mushroom, mushroom, coconut milk, cinnamon, black pepper. I also have, oh, yes. This is my favorite, the chocolate gold. The chocolate gold with all the same ingredients plus cocoa. So you get a little chocolate milk. This is great for kids too, but I mean, I'll steal it from the kids because it's my favorite. Um, We've got the Organifi Harmony. This is cacao. This is for healthy hormones. It's delicious too. It's like a chocolate milk. I've mixed it with coffee sometimes. Um, What else we have? Glow. This is their plant-based collagen, natural collagen support with tremella, mushroom, rosehip, aloe vera, bamboo, silica, pomegranate, all kinds of good stuff. Tastes really good. We've got the Organifi Pure right here. That's for mental clarity and digestion. I've got two protein powders here. Let's see. We've got the big ol' vanilla 
Complete protein is for craving control and satiety, satiety. So I guess that means you're satiated. Yes, you're full. Then we've got, let's see, this one is the complete chocolate protein, also for craving control and satiety. I've never heard that word, but I, know, I get it. I know what it means, Organifi, thank you. I also got their brand new essential magnesium. That is good for the nervous system, the bones, the muscles, and it's great for relaxation, putting you in a positive mood. It promotes bone growth and regeneration and soothes muscles. It's all plant-based, of course. All right, we've got their Organifi Balance Probiotic for daily digestive support. This is the first time I've ever seen it in a pill form, so I think this one is new. So yeah, they've got some great new products on the website. Again, you can check it all out at OrganifiShop.com slash FoodHeals. Use the discount code FoodHeals. You'll save 20% off. And right now, if you want to get the Sunrise to Sunset Kit, that's the green, the red, and the gold, you'll get a free count of 20 packs of Organifi Pure. Organifi Pure travel packs. Again, that is for mental clarity and digestion. It's really light. It tastes really, really good. And so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for unboxing my Organifi with me today, OrganifiShop.com slash Food Heals. All right, next up, I'm talking to Dr. Deepika Krishna. This is a brand new interview. She's an integrative health coach and she's a gynecologist. And when she was in her gynecological career, she was suffering from a hormonal imbalance and no doctor or none of her fellow gynecologists could help her find the root cause. So she went on her own mission and she decided to take a holistic approach to her health and she realized that she was able to heal and she had to help her patients by now looking at the whole body, not just the symptoms. So this is totally a food heal story, y'all. Let's dive right in. Roll it, Roxy. All right. She is a gynecologist and an integrative health coach who helps people with chronic lifestyle diseases build their immunity and longevity. Please welcome Dr. Deepika Krishna to the show. So glad to have you. Oh, I am so much. I, I, I'm an honor to be at the show. Uh, I know you guys do a great work. So really very glad to be here talking to you. Well, I appreciate that, Dr. Krishna. And I know you're doing great work too, but take us back and tell us a little bit about what you do, who you are and how you got started. Okay, so uh, I am a physician, I am a doctor, and I am expert. I'm a gynecologist uh, in short, and I am an expert in gynecological cancers. So, but currently, I have not been practicing since five years. I've left my gynecological practices because of some reasons, which uh, I would uh, you know share it later in the podcast. But my main passion is to uh, work with women, you know, build up their immunity, their longevity, so that they don't end up any kind of uh, gynecological cancers or any other uh, problems which can be life-threatening. Well, it sounds like our missions are very much in alignment. And yeah, I would love for you to take us back through the journey of why you turned away from the traditional medical system and went more into the holistic route. Okay, so you know, I all um, I had a personal experience as well. I mean, I was uh, having a little bit hormonal imbalance uh, at uh, at a particular time, and you know, of course. I, I mean, I went to all my friends who were doctors, who were, you know, gynecologists. Basically, a doctor is not able to treat their own case. You know, it happens a lot of time with the doctors. So then you talk to each other and come up with the right kind of medicine which works for you. But, you know, it after a very long period, the situation was not healed. And then I uh, went to, you know, somebody who guided me with holistic uh, wellness, the complete wellness. And that actually brought a huge difference in my health so yeah this was my very personal reason uh, and but apart from that also you know while I was dealing with uh, gynecological cancers uh, I found that it's too much of painful things you know which uh, the patients go patient always go through uh, and I really wanted to do something I wanted to do something which can stop that gynecological cancers or any other cancers because I could see a certain kind of pattern uh, with with all the cases which the the patients had and I knew what is required at that place 
at that moment. So yeah, here I am now completely doing my holistic uh, practice. And uh, also I have my, you know, a nutrition uh, and nutritional supplement uh, company by the name of Immunosciences, because, because I truly believe in nutrition and whole food and, you know, any supplement which is required when you're not getting end of nutrition with your food, you can always supplement it. So yeah, this is how, you know, my interest completely diverted to a new field. Well, I could not agree more. And our experiences are a little bit similar. I watched both of my parents deal with cancer. First, my mother, carcinoma of unknown origin, then my father, liver cancer. And I saw Western medicine completely fail them and they both lost their lives. And so that's why I became passionate about learning about nutrition and then teaching people about nutrition and the body's ability to heal itself when given the tools it needs to do so. Can we delve deeper into gynecological cancer? Because that is not something we've talked a lot about on this show. So I would love to hear your perspective as to why are women getting this and what are some of the treatment protocols and things that people can do if they have such a diagnosis? Okay. So the, uh, I mean, according to the research and whatever data we have seen, it begin, it all begins with the hormonal imbalance. It all begins with the lifestyle. You know, when uh, your estrogen progesterone level goes completely imbalanced, your uh, endometri- endometritis becomes, you know, it gets inflamed, uh, you know, and your it, it, it becomes, so you know, a lot of, in fact, a lot of youngsters who face these challenge of PCOS, which was not existing during our parents' time. So a lot happens because of uh, the lifestyle. Although there is not one definite reason that why these cancer happen, but a pattern which has been seen that, okay, you know, these patients have a history of all these kind of uh, problems. You know, it can um, begin anywhere right from your you know liver disorders or liver you know your uh, gut disorders your uh, you know adrenals your uh, hormones so it begins anywhere but then you know eventually as we know that uh, the cancer cell it uh, multiplies itself very very quickly and that's why it's very hard to uh, spot on the right reason that what triggers that the cancer So, yeah, I mean, the cause of cancer is still unknown. But if we see the history, there is a lot of uh, similarities in the patients. And also the research has proven a lot. So, yeah, I mean, this is something. But if you ask me, I will say a lifestyle is the biggest thing. Uh, What you eat is what you are made of. So it's absolutely important to be stress-free. I mean, I'll say again, stress-free is a very generic term. You cannot be stress-free, but at least, you know... uh, Stress light? Can we be stress light? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I think think you should be able to manage your stress, whether it is physical or mental, because, um, you know, uh, these stresses are continuously getting absorbed by your cells. It is getting absorbed in your body. Although it's not being seen at that moment, but there is some kind of effect happening inside your cell. So it's absolutely important. And of course, you know, lifestyle, I cannot uh, say how important it is. I think now people are again and again talking about, uh, you know, the sleep, the food, what they're putting in, the, uh, you know, the mental health, the company they keep. Uh, It is, it has become so important. And I'm really glad that everyone is getting aware uh, of these things. And also, you know, there are so many toxins which actually trigger these uh, hormones. So, yeah, I mean, that's a whole different story altogether. I mean, if we talk about the toxins which are available in our air and our, um, you know, day to day food and everything else, it's a different topic altogether. But, yeah, it's a collective thing. You know, everything brings on some kind of change in your body, which is very, very uh very minute, very little, but it gradually affects your DNA, your cells, and hence the complication starts. Right. And whether it's the stress, whether it's the hormones, whether it's the toxins, whether it's all of these things combined with other, you know, environmental factors and toxins we have no control over and our physical, emotional state, how do you help people with their nutrition, with their supplementation, and figure out a comprehensive plan for their body. 
Okay, so I'm glad you asked me this. Uh, you know, we work with each patient and each patient we work very, very differently. It's a very customized, very personalized plan, uh, which we opt for a patient looking at their you know, lifestyle, looking at the disease, looking at what is the ultimate goal which they want. Right. So, uh, you know, I'll just give an example. We had a, a patient which uh, uh, and she was around 70, 75, but she developed uh, some kind of uh, malignancy. But she, her only goal was that she wanted to uh, be there for her, you know, the daughter's delivery. She was like, OK, I just oh. want to live. Because, you know, all the doctors have said that, OK, you don't have more life, you know, just plan your list, whatever you want to do and all. So I think working with patients like that to uh, reach their goal, whatever it is, and to make them, you know, feeling satisfied and fulfilling is one of the goal. Uh, when we talk about cancer, of course, we know that, um, you know, I'll say 50 to 60 percent cancer are still curable, but not all kind of cancers are curable. So uh, the plan is very, very personalized, very uh, we sit down with the patient. We try to understand that what kind of food they prefer. What are they doing wrong? We eliminate those things, whatever is wrong in their life. And also el elimination happens very, very slowly because, you know, instantly because these habits have been developed since years together and the patients, they, uh, they'll, say, they'll say, okay, okay, it's very difficult for me to, you know, eliminate certain things. But if the people are very mindful and aware, the patients are mindful and aware, then they are very cooperative with us. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is how we work. We sit down with the patient, understand uh, the patient's need, uh, go through all their reports and customize a plan that what all uh, tests is required, what all supplements are required, if they require any supplement. We try to um, give them maximum nutrition through the food, but if uh, the absorption is not happening very properly, then we recommend them some supplements as well. Very important. Yeah, that's such a good point. Because, of course, in an ideal world, we want to get all of our nutrition from food. But unfortunately, that's not always possible, depending on where we live, depending on what's in our soil, depending on where our fruits and vegetables are coming from, depending on, you know, glycosate and all of these things that are being sprayed on our soil. It's like if you're not growing your own food, you kind of can't guarantee that it's not toxic. And I hate saying that because I want to live in a world that's abundant, but that's why I'm so obsessed with my supplements and also knowing where my supplements are coming from. So you have a supplement company and it's at immunosciences.in. And can you tell us a little bit about formulating these supplements and how you formulate them so that we know that we're getting the best of the best and not the crap, you know, because you can get supplements at Trader Joe's, but I know they're crap, but a lot of people don't. So talk to me about the formulation of the supplements and getting the right nutrition in there. Okay. So, you know, when we, like I said, from my years of experience, I did understand there is certain kind of pattern in the patients, which uh, is somewhere bringing them to this situation, what they currently are. So that actually inspired me to look into their nutrition. And when I looked into the nutrition, there were some deficiencies, which people were not being able to uh, get through food. And that literally triggered me to, you know, work with uh, a team of biochemist and doctor and um, you know ayurvedic specialist to uh, you know to to make some kind of wonderful formulas for each and every kind of uh, clinical uh, problems right so uh, if i talk about how our supplements are planned definitely we go through a lot of uh, you know firstly it's an very long procedure we come up with uh, you know what are the deficiencies which people are getting these days and then we work we look into that then we look at the fda and what are they saying we uh, you know go through the who research papers that what what is the current situation of all kind of food and then there is a team which sits down uh, you know a team of biochemists and chemist and like i said the team of doctors and all then we you know plan out that what all support supplements need, what all ingredients need to go in this particular supplements and then you know there has been a lot of testing being done on that then you know uh, we do uh, third party testing we do some lab research there are a lot of uh, brainstorming is all i mean it has been done in each and every product and um, you know when we do the you know the, the testing so then we have seen such wonderful results even uh, you know 
a very simple thing like we came up with a wonderful biotin which has got a little bit extra ingredient than uh, just vitamin b7 so uh, that actually helped uh, our uh, patients get very instant glow with their, you know, with their hair, with their skin, and also with their, uh, you know, nails. And similarly, we have one supplement, which is called Health Reset, which is a combination of 15 herb, botanical herb. Uh, it includes, you know, peppering, ashwagandha, and various, there are 15 uh, herbs around it. That also is a wonderful, wonderful uh, supplement for a general immunity, which has been showing great results since uh, three years now and it has got a you know a very hardcore following so as soon as, as it comes you know it just sold off in, in a month <laughs> yeah i mean uh, yes yeah, so now we are just talking up more we are making more SQs of the same um, the health reset because it's the demand so i mean these are some results what we get so like i said uh, currently i have around 25 SQs of uh, supplements and each one is very very effectively uh, made uh, third party tested and you know it it's it's wonderful what can i say <laughs> i love that i love the confidence behind it yes it is wonderful so um i'm such a supplement person and i take so many but i think next i need to try the biotin because i've noticed that hair is growing a little slower so i think that might be something i'm missing so i'm definitely in for that talk to me about some of the patients that you work with maybe some patient success stories so i know you talked about um people with cancer what other chronic diseases or what other issues are you helping people with? So, you know, currently a lot of cases come to us of mental health and PCOS, which is very uh, strange. And when we have seen that PCOS generally in um, young girls, even starting from 14 uh, till 18 is a very, very high age. I mean, this is the time when people, girls, they are having PCOS, they're getting diagnosed by this, which is a really sad part because, because these girls are very young, they have their whole life behind it. And if we look at the pattern, a lot of them are stress related, they're emotional, um, you know, they I mean, it's mental health related, they're emotional health related, right? Because uh, these are the girls who are, you know, they are very, uh, you know, they are ambitious, they want to do something in the for themselves, for their family. And also, I think with the social media and everything, they have such a uh, pressure to look perfect in uh, any situation that they are being misleaded for various kind of things to apply and to eat. Right. So, yeah, I mean, because of that, we have seen a huge rise of uh, these kind of cases. So, yeah, when uh, I mean, I, I feel very painful to the mothers who come to me and, you know, they we have a session on. Uh, then have what what to eat, and then we said sit down with the patient to talk about their what are the problems they are going through. Uh, so in fact, a very interesting story. Uh, one of my uh, you know one of my relative, her uh, daughter, you know, reached to me that you know uh, uh, she calls me aunt. So aunt, I um, uh, she went to Colorado College, and uh, uh, and within a span of a year, she gained double weight you know she was like just completely i mean the reason was unknown she went to all the doctors there they were saying you know everything is perfect you just have to work out you just have to you know just work out eat less mm -hmm. uh, that's what you can you should be doing but yeah i mean when we worked with that uh, girl uh, we came we came across that she was already going through a lot of emotional turmoil because she switched the country. She went to a new college and plus, you know, she was not able to make friends. And probably there was a lot of pressure from the college also to perform uh, at a certain level. And in between all of these, uh, uh, there was also, you know, the all the perfect good looking girls. So she was feeling a lot under pressure. So when we worked on her emotional health, uh, of course, with the support of uh, supplements, and medicines and uh, other therapies uh, she showed a huge results and you know now she's performing amazing in her field oh. so yeah this i mean similar cases we uh, come across very very often and uh, you know again one case i could just remember that um, you know one patient again she was very i mean she was little overweight uh, and she was facing a lot of challenge and she wanted to you know feel healthy that's what she wanted and she came to me that okay I want to reduce weight so you know we 
had a discussion with her that weight is not the issue. It's just that there is something you might not be feeling with uh, good with some things. Let's just do some testing and all. So while we did the blood test, the blood test was all good. Everything was okay. But then again, you know, when we dig more deeper, then she spoke about her family issues and things like that. She gradually opened up. And yeah, of course, there were a little bit of deficiencies in her uh, blood report, which we worked on. But I think, you know, speaking openly, working on your emotional health, mental health, health makes a huge change in, uh, in the patients. That is what I have noticed and with the support. And if we only give medicines and supplements, it doesn't work so well. But if we do a complete holistic thing, you know, where your mental health is being taken care of, physical health is being taken care care of, um, you know, then the results are great. Yeah. Well, I couldn't agree more. And I had to discover this, unfortunately, by experimenting on myself, because once I had lost both of my parents to cancer, I was like, okay, nutrition is the answer. I got to juice. I got to do smoothies. I got to do supplements. I got to be vegan. I got to eat healthy. I got to work out. I got to de-stress. I got to do all the physical things. I'm Mm. sitting in saunas and cryotherapy. And it was amazing. You know, Dr. Krishna, I felt so much better, but I wasn't fully healing. And the missing component was I didn't grieve. I wasn't working on my emotional health. I wasn't working on my stress. I wasn't working on the fact that I had just lost my mom and dad. Like I was missing that component. And once I realized how synergistic all of these components are, diet and nutrition and supplements and mental, emotional health and physical health and de-stressing, and they all work together. Then I was like, oh, now I'm actually giving my body all the tools it needs to heal. Because if you only exercise or, you know, that might help a little. If you only do nutrition, that's going to help a little. If you only heal the emotions, that's going to help a lot. But Mm -hmm. you still are missing components if you're still eating McDonald's while healing your emotions. So when you realize how these all work synergistically, you, you change your life. And I think that's like the message of my show. And I think that's the message that you're also here to spread is just like when you figure it out, everything changes and you can live a life without chronic disease, without being depressed, without fill in the blank, without being overweight, without living in the comparison trap that it sounds like that woman was living in in college and Instagram and all of the things. You can be free of those things. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, you know, before we end the today's conversation, yesterday I was having a podcast with one of the amazing guests. She gave a very, very insightful, which I like to share here. Uh, she said that yeah. it's absolutely important to be true to yourself. You know, and I think being true to yourself is such powerful statement because, you know, we feel completely lost in our everyday life. We are either making somebody happy or we are living for, you know, some some other, you know, I mean, so that's we mask ourselves so much in our day to day life. You know, we hide our pain. We uh, come up as a very strong human. We because we have so many responsibility, we might be a mother, we might be a daughter, you know, then we are handling our parents, we're handling our kids. That's why we feel that, okay, we have to be very strong. You know, uh, we have to put this mask, but it is very important to be, you know, original and true to yourself and and to your feelings and maybe reach out to somebody who uh, whom you can trust and be open uh, with your feelings. Well, I think we're the same person. I was just recording um, my audio book recently, and um, there's a quote from the book that I wrote, and it is something that I came to the conclusion of that sounds very similar, but it's just, when you live in your truth and stand in your power, you are unstoppable. And I think it's exactly what you said. And it's like, we live on different Mm -hmm. sides of the planet and we've come to the same conclusions, right? And I think that's so powerful too, that all of these people all over the world are discovering, discovering the healing power of the body, the mind to heal itself. And that's just incredible. So I appreciate you. And I would love to just before we wrap up here a little bit more about how we can book a consultation with you and we can book lab tests tests with you. Take us through that journey. If someone's like, I want to work with Dr. Krishna right now, what can they do? So if somebody wants to connect with me, they can reach to my website, which is www.drdeepikakrishna.com. You can, you know, straight away right there. You can book your appointment there. And if somebody is looking 
looking for the supplements, then the website is www.immunosciences.in. And, you know, the easiest way is to find on the Instagram because we all are there on Instagram helping everyone. So you can anytime DM me. Yes. Uh, yeah. And if you want to write me an email, you can reach me to Dr. Deepika Krishna at the rate gmail.com. Thank you so much. And yes, I was stalking you on Instagram earlier and I loved your video. So <laughs> if you want to follow, I always tell people like curate your feed with health and wellness, nutrition, inspiration, motivation. Don't curate your feed with a bunch of like negativity and news cycle and all of that. So add Dr. Deepika Krishna to your list. And that is at D-R-D-E-E-P-I-K-A-K-R-I-S-H-N-E. A. And I followed you today and I'm very excited to see more from you. So thank you so much for being here, Dr. Krishna. I really appreciate it. Great. Thank you so much. So want to unbox something else with me? I have got a box right here of cured nutrition. So I just opened this beautiful box and it says, we are cured, a Colorado proud company who has put quality local sourcing and a strong brand behind our name since inception. We're on a mission to harness the healing power of nature with products your body was designed to thrive on. So their whole thing is CBD and CBN and THC. So if those are things that interest you, they definitely interest me. Um, so what we've got here is the rise that is for focus and clarity. And it's a really cute little box and little bottle. And then what else do we have? This is, oh, this is my other rise. Okay. Two, two rise. Let's see what else. The CBN night oil. This is a hemp oil. This is for improved sleep quality, easing the mind, soothing the body and accelerating recovery. It says, how long does it take to feel the effects? Generally speaking, when taken sublingually, you can begin to feel the effects of CBD within 15 to 20 minutes. Like any other supplement, consistency is required. So that is their CBN night oil. Um, it has CBN, CBD, THC, MCT oil, and hemp extract. All right, what else we got? This is the night caps. So these have a six to one CBD to CBN ratio and five milligrams of CBN per capsule, 30 milligrams of CBD per capsule. And they say take one 30 minutes before bed. And all of their sups, uh, excuse me, all of their sleep supplements have not done me wrong. They have the Serenity gummies. These are CBD and microdose THC with functional mushrooms and adaptogens. And they've got two flavors here. We have the Clementine and we've got the passion fruit. Yes, please. These are really sweet. They're pretty delicious. Let me read about them. Find your center with cured serenity gummies infused with a blend of our favorite calming adaptogens and full spectrum CBD extract. This sweet escape will leave you will leave you feeling renewed, whether you're seeking to enhance your daily meditation or simply wind down after a long day. Who knew serenity could taste so sweet? And they are sweet. Um, they do ha contain cane sugar. So just letting you know, um, but they're sweet and they're pretty delicious. Um, let's see. We paired our favorite functional mushrooms and herbs with sustainably sourced U.S. grown hemp to soothe and nourish your mind, body, and spirit from sunrise to sunset. And the trinity is CBD, functional mushrooms, and adaptogens. All right. So if you're interested in trying some of these products from Cured Nutrition, go to curednutrition.com. Use the discount code FOODHEALS to save 20% off your order. All right, next up, we have a clip, and it's from an interview that I just did with Jeremy Ryan Slate, and it's about the controversial interview that RFK did on Joe Rogan's podcast in June. RFK is running for president. You know this is not a political show, but these are health-related topics, so we're going to dive into them. This conversation with Jeremy got so controversial that I couldn't air the full interview here because I'm not trying to get canceled, but stay tuned to the end and I'll share with you a special announcement and where you can hear the rest of this interview. All right, roll it, Roxy. 
Well, Twitter is ablaze after Joe Rogan interviewed RFK Jr., who is the son of Bobby Kennedy, nephew of JFK, who recently announced his presidential run. And they had this really deep discussion on the history and the efficacy of vaccines. So it's a very important conversation, in my opinion, that needs to be had because no matter where you stand on the vaccine debate, medicine and science is always evolving and changing, and we need to be aware of what we are putting into our bodies and why. Well, Dr. Peter Hotez entered the chat on Twitter, and he was slamming the interview as awful and nonsense. And side note to Food Heals listeners, because you'll get me, Dr. Hortez also doesn't believe in vitamins and is a self-proclaimed junk food addict. But hey, he's a doctor, so still want to hear what he has to say. Joe Rogan offered Dr. Hortez $100,000 to the charity of his choice if he agreed to debate Kennedy. You know, if he's wrong, if Kennedy is wrong, prove it. Let's talk about this. Come from a place of curiosity. Let's learn from every side. Then Steve Kirsch chimed in and said he would add another $600,000 to see that debate. Now, more and more people have added to the total. So I saw one tweet that said it was going to be $2 million by the end of the day because everyone's like, I'll put money on this. I'll put money on this. And so far, Dr. Hortez has refused to participate in a debate. And Jeremy, you tweeted it's because he can't defend his position. So you Add it to the chat. <laughs> Got and, myself in trouble. Yeah, that's what I want to hear about because I would love for you to take me through this Twitter war, how it started with the podcast interview, and what do you think it means that this polarizing but crucial public health topic like this is blowing up on Twitter? Like, what are some of your thoughts on this? Well, I, I think it's interesting because it does seem like kind of the, the, the dam is breaking. And I think Joe Rogan didn't really in- tend for to kind of be the spearhead of this but i think over the last couple of years he's, he's been the spearhead of this literally because he's interested in in learning about different things and and to me i think that the issue is when there's things we can't talk about and we can't discuss that's that's a warning bell for me and w- when i looked at that and i was like okay so if if dr hotez um can defend his point like i don't see any problem with him having a conversation with with RFK Jr. about it. But a lot of the, the comments have been really interesting. Um, a lot of them have been to the effect of, well, he can't have that conversation with him because that would saying that there's value in his conversation, right? Like basically for him to take up a debate would be to give that debate merit. And that just seems a little crazy to me, right? Right? Like it, it seems like if we can't talk about something and we can't discuss something and you can't defend a position, well, then you don't have a position. Am I right? How can we make a decision if we haven't heard all sides of the conversation or all sides of the debate? The reason that it's polarizing, there's a reason for that. So why is that? I would like to know as a person who wants to understand what we're putting into our bodies and why, what is the history? What does the science actually say? What is the media telling us that's different from, you know, what the science or the doctors or the politicians are telling us? I want to hear all sides so I can make my own informed health decision. So And the other thing, Jeremy, is that it benefits charity. So all this Mm -hmm. is going to do is allow two parties to share the information that they believe is valid and then let the Twitter sphere or the American people make their own decisions. And $600,000 plus $100,000, we're already at $700,000. And then I think there was going to be a GoFundMe. I saw $2.7 million this morning, too. Okay, wow. (laughs) Okay. So that's all going to go to charity. So I think this is a win-win situation. And I personally would really like to hear the debate because I found Mm -hmm. the interview on Joe Rogan absolutely captivating motivating, fascinating, informative. And if there is any information in there, I want to know. I thought it was well-researched and well-rounded. What did you think? What were some of your takeaways? Well, the thing I thought was pretty interesting is, first of all, how Rogan introduced the interview was very interesting. You know, I thought he was a whack and he was a kook and he was these different things. And I think the more you dig into it, the more you realize, well, this guy's he's database, he's study based. You know, you look at even in um, during the pandemic, we were using a, a, a vaccine that hadn't even been studied. Like we, we don't we don't do that. Right. But like that's kind of where we've gotten to in, in history. So the thing I found interesting about how uh, RFK introduced it is he took us on his journey of how he got there. You know, he's an environmentalist. He's a, he's a lawyer and he was suing cities and businesses and things like that to really protect the environment. And I think that's a it's a very admirable thing. And he had mentioned um, in my part of the world, which is near the Hudson River, um, that there, it was so polluted that the Hudson River from time to time would just go on fire. Like the chemicals would actually burn the water. And one of the big things that they ended up finding 
um, in the water um, was mercury and some of these different chemicals. So he was really hammering mercury. And there was a group of women that started coming to his talks, and they were very interested in the mercury side of things because that was something they had connected to their children's problems via vaccines. So one day a woman shows up at his, at his house with a stack, which he says, I don't know if he actually measured this. So I'm like, wow, that's very specific. He said it was 18 <laughs> inches high of studies. So what he did is he looked at the study summaries, obviously, because it's going to take forever to go through the entire study. And he kept seeing the same things related to mercury, related to mercury. And he's like, wow, this is really something here. Okay, so I have to cut it off there. And here's why. I'm not trying to get canceled. It's happened before. I know it can happen again. I've got strikes on YouTube. I was canceled by my software for talking about health and wellness, for helping people with vegetables and vitamins. But those are the two V words that I want to talk about if you get my drift. If we're going to talk about the other controversial V word, V word, it's going to go somewhere else. So my OG listeners, you remember what happened. If you're a new listener, I will briefly go over it, but you can go back and listen to the story of what happened. I've done a few podcast episodes on this. So if you want to hear the full story, you can go back to episode 356. That's where I shared what happened to me when I was whatever the word you want to use, Ashley says deplatformed. I was calling it censored. Um, you could also call it canceled. It's all semantics. But then I had Ashley on episode 359. She's my good friend and attorney. And we talked about what those terms actually mean and where what happened to me fell within those terms. And so we determined that I was deplatformed um, because we found out that private companies basically can do whatever they want. So if they want to censor you, they can. And it's not technically censorship because censorship is protected by the First Amendment, but that's by government censorship. So private companies, these tech companies can do whatever they want. And because I was essentially censored and um, deplatformed by a private company, I don't really have any rights. However, if you're censored by the government, then you do have rights. So we talk about all of that. Um, but in case you didn't hear, I will briefly share what happened and where I'm putting all my content now that got taken down. So most of us that run online businesses, we have what's called a CRM, and that CRM hosts all our courses, it hosts all our emails, it hosts all our websites, all our funnels, and it hosts our content that is sometimes behind a paywall or something like that. So I had my online courses there, Food Freedom, I had some of my podcast courses there that I do for my co podcast consulting clients, I had Food Heals You there, my monthly mastermind um, for people who are are in wellness, wellness business owners who are building wellness empires. So I had all this stuff there and I had my email list and that was how I would email you guys if you were on the list. Hey, there's a new episode out or hey, I have a new course out, that type of thing. Or hey, did you hear this in the news about health? I wanted to make you aware. And overnight, they essentially said um, that my content was too controversial for their platform and they shut my ability to email down, which you could say, okay, that's not that big of a deal. Just go get another service. But what that does is that breaks all of the links that I have everywhere, like go to foodhealsnation.com slash blah, 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 right? And um, you could enter, you know, give me your email address in exchange for something, whether it was an online course or a downloadable or something else. So all those links are now broken. So long story short, um, now, and then people were unable to log into their courses, like all of this stuff, okay? It was a mess. It was unacceptable. And they censored me for an interview I did with a doctor talking about the healing powers of vitamins and vegetables. That was part one. Then it went on and on with strikes on YouTube for interviews with Dr. McCullough. Um, and that is, you know, Jeremy and I talked about that. Um, Dr. McCullough was on my show and then he was also, I had to put him behind a paywall for the second part of our show because we were talking about controversial topics and I didn't want to get canceled again, but YouTube gave me strikes uh, for these. So long story short, I was mad for a long time. I'm not going to lie. Um, and I was kind of stilted stuck, uh, because I didn't want to put, put all this work and money and time into building things and putting all of my content somewhere only to have it taken away again. 
So I have a solution now, and they promise not to censor me. They promise that my content is safe there. And it's not an all-in-one solution. It's not as robust as a CRM. I know this is getting into the weeds. You guys are like, get to the juice. We don't care. Okay, so where am I going to house all of the content that I used to have, including my food freedom course, including controversial episodes, including extra episodes, including when I go behind the scenes of wellness businesses. This is for all my wellness entrepreneurs that listen, right? So all that content lost its home. Well, we have a new home. It's on a little website you've probably heard of. That's right. Food Heals is on Patreon. So you can go to patreon.com slash food heals. That's where you're going to get access to all my previously censored content. That's where you're going to get access to courses like Food Freedom. You're going to get access to interviews with people like Adam Shibley and Whitney Lauritsen and Jason Robel and Laura Powers and all kinds of people who have done deep dives with me into topics that are either not necessarily perfectly right for Food Heals or too controversial for Food Heals. So whether it's business building that doesn't quite fit on the main Food Heals show or it's a little bit too health controversy and I'm not trying to get canceled again, all that good stuff, all of my courses, all of that is going to be on or is on right now, Patreon at patreon.com slash food heals. So if you want to hear the rest of my interview with Jeremy, that is on Patreon. It's on the level called food heals VIP. There are three levels on Patreon. Let's go through them. So the three membership options are Food Heals Friends, Food Heals VIP, and Food Heals University. So let's go through what's included in each tier. So Food Heals Friends, that is for you if you're looking for extra ways to get healthy, if you just want more content like similar things on the Food Heals podcast. So you're going to get extra exclusive Food Heals episodes. Those are always ad-free. There will be no sponsorship on those episodes. You'll get vegan recipes, shopping lists, detox protocols, and you'll get health and wellness video courses with me and other people from this amazing community. The next level is Food Heals VIP, and this is for you if you're looking for extra ways to get healthy. You'll get everything from Food Heals Friends, and you also want step-by-step programs, guides, and courses to help you get healthy. So you'll get everything in Food Heals Friends, plus you'll get all my previously censored content. So some of the stuff that has been censored has been taken down off of the Food Heals podcast. You're going to get that. And anything in the future that I do that I'm afraid of getting censored for that's a little bit more controversial controversial will go on there as well because I want to give you the most up-to-date health information without getting myself canceled, right? You feel me? You're also going to get some of my guided meditations so you can manifest your dream life. I love making those meditations. So whenever I'm dealing with something, I'll create a meditation for myself and it'll help me get through that period of my life. So those are going on there as well. You'll also get extra juicy Food Heals episodes. So sometimes you'll get some life updates, things that are going on or things that are just too juicy, too controversial for the main show. Then you're also going to get my online courses. You'll get access to Food Freedom. That one is up there right now, and I've got some more in the works. So Food Freedom is for you if you want to stop body shaming yourself, if you want to end the endless cycle of emotional eating, that course is going to help you do that. And that is all at the Food Heals VIP level. And then the final level, we've got Food Heals U, Food Heals University, and that is for all of my creators, all of my entrepreneurs. So Food Heals U is for you if you're a wellness professional building a wellness empire. So maybe you're coaching, maybe you're speaking, maybe you're podcasting like me, maybe you're influencing, you're doing retreats, you're writing books, all that good stuff. This is where I take you behind the scenes of my business, behind the scenes of everyone else's business that I know that are crushing it in wellness. So you're going to get everything in Food Heals Friends. You're going to get everything in Food Heals VIP. Plus, you'll get monthly Zoom parties with me and with guest speakers. A lot of you have been members of that. It's been called 
Rise Mastermind, Rise and Bloom Mastermind, Food Heals You. I might have had another name in there. I can't remember, but we meet every month and we work on each other's businesses and we mastermind together and we talk about health and wellness and frankly, what's going on in our lives. So it gets personal, it gets businessy, it's all the things. So we get on Zoom parties and we all talk and sometimes I teach, sometimes we chat, sometimes we mastermind. It just depends on what the group wants each time. You're also going to get downloadable templates. So let's say that you want to create a book for Amazon. We have a template for that. Uh, we have journal templates. I have social media templates. I've got your sponsor sponsorship decks, if you're trying to get sponsorship, um, media kit decks, PR templates, all that good stuff. So you have a place to start if you're trying to make your PR or media kit so you can book more podcast guesting experiences, right? I've got templates there for you. You're also going to get entrepreneurial courses. These are video courses. I've got branding, podcasting, marketing, PR, so much more. And then of course, we've got more behind the scenes content with our favorite wellness businesses, private podcasts, all that good stuff. So if you want to hear the rest of my interview with Jeremy, join the Food Heals VIP level. If you just want more health and wellness content, join the Food Heals Friends level. And if you're next level growing your business, then join us at Food Heals U. That's the level for you. So I'm going to do a full episode that really covers more as to what's inside each level of the Patreon, um, specific course names and things like that. You can also go to patreon.com slash food heals. And if you click about, you can see all the very specific courses or podcast episodes that are currently up in each of the tiers. And then I'm adding content every month. So I just spent the last month and a half to two months putting content there. So all of the content that was censored, all of the content that I lost a home for is now there. And then I'm creating new content for you every single month. So you can hear the new episode with Jeremy right now, and you can hear the episodes that got censored on YouTube, plus food freedom, all kinds of great courses, meditations, and more. So check it out. It's all at patreon.com slash food heals. All right. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Let me know what else you want to see on Patreon, and I will create it for you. See you next time, Food Heals Nation. Food Heals Nation, if you're like me, you know that drinking enough water is imperative for our hydration and our detox. And I personally try to drink half my body weight in ounces of water per day. But have you thought about the quality of water that you are drinking? So according to the Environmental Working Group, virtually every home in the U.S. has harmful contaminants in its tap water. So ditch the tap water, ditch the cheap water filters, and check out my favorite water purifier company, AquaTrue. You can visit AquaTrue.com, use the coupon code FOODHEALS for 20% off any AquaTrue purifier. AquaTrue purifiers use a four-stage reverse osmosis purification process, and their countertop purifiers work with no insulation, no plumbing. I set it up myself, don't worry, it's easy. It removes 15 times more contaminants than ordinary pitcher filters and are specifically designed to combat chemicals like PFAs in our water supply. The filters are affordable and long lasting, no changing filters every two to three months. AquaTrue filters last from six months up to two years. AquaTrue comes with a 30 day money back guarantee and even makes a great gift. Today, my listeners will receive 20% off any AquaTrue purifier. Just go to AquaTrue.com, that's A-Q-U-A-T-R-U.com, and enter the code FOODHEALS at checkout. That's 20% off any AquaTrue water purifier when you go to AquaTrue.com and use code FOODHEALS. Food Heals Nation, did you know that Americans spend an average of 90% of their time indoors and take about 20,000 breaths per day? According to the EPA, indoor air is two to five times more polluted than outdoor air, and in some cases, this is scary, up to 100 times more polluted. The data shows that air pollution is responsible for nearly 7 million premature deaths globally. That's why it's so important to filter the air in our homes. You remember my story after discovering toxic mold in my home almost a year ago, I realized the 
importance of having multiple high quality air filters in my home to protect myself, to protect the air that I'm breathing and the air that my beagle Lily is breathing. Think about everyone in your household, your family members, your roommates, your kids, your cats, your dogs, your pets right? We have to be so conscious of the air that we're breathing inside. But that's why I'm obsessed with Air Doctor. You can visit airdoctorpro.com, use the code FOODHEALS, and you can get up to 39% off an air purifier. Air Doctor filters out 99.99% of dangerous contaminants and allergens like pollen and pet dander and dust mites and mold and even bacteria and viruses. So your lungs don't have to. It's so easy to set up. It's quiet and I can rest easy knowing I'm breathing cleaner air every day when I'm working from home. If you work from home like me, you've got to filter your air. So head on over to airdoctorpro.com, use the promo code FOODHEALS, and depending on the model you pick, you'll receive up to 39% off or up to $300 off. This is exclusive to Food Heals Nation listeners. You'll also receive a free three-year warranty on any unit, which is an additional $84 value. Check it out by going to A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O.com, airdoctorpro.com, and use promo code FOODHEALS. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately.